today. Amen. We've already prayed in leadership prayer, but now it's our opportunity to come together corporately. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you see your colleagues and team members, invite them to come uh, to prayer. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We're going to do that today. We're going to thank the Lord into his courts with praise. We're going to praise God today. Hallelujah. We're going to break up fallow ground, amen, so that the word can go forth through prayer. Amen. We are thankful unto the Lord. Let's lift our hands unto the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day because this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. We are thankful unto you, O Lord God. We give you praise and give you glory. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We bless the wonderful name of Jesus at all times. Your praises shall continually be in our mouths. Father God, this is the confidence that we have in you today, that if we ask you anything according to your will and your word. We have the petitions that we desire of you. So we are grateful unto you, O Lord God. We are thankful unto you. We give you praise today in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for this great nation. We pray for this nation. We call it blessed because you are the God over it. We are your people that you have called out for your inheritance. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for as we humble ourselves and pray this morning. Father, we thank you that your ears are open and attentive to your prayers, our prayers. And so, Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise and thank you in advance for every prayer that is already answered in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for leadership in our church. We pray for every pastor, every teacher, every evangelist, apostle, and prophet. We thank you, Father, for those whom you have given uh, leadership over us, and we pray for them. We would not allow ourselves to judge them, but we we'll speak blessings upon them in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for our own pastors this morning. We pray in Jesus' name for Pastor Wright and Pastor Leslie. We lift them up corporately in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that they uh, you have given us pastors after your own heart. And as we pray, we declare that they are anointed to minister your word in the name of Jesus to the poor. We thank you they are uh, able to minister your word to the meek. They are able, Father, in the name of Jesus by the anointing that have been placed upon them to bring healing to the brokenhearted, deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. We declare that they and their family are blessed. They are protected by the blood of Jesus. From They are protected from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father, we praise you for doing abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to your word in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you for each other, the body of Christ. And we pray today, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, for uh, the body of Christ, we as your people, in Jesus' name, we declare, Father, that we are what the Word says that we are, and we can do what the Word says that we can do. We are not just hearers of your Word, but we are doers of your Word. We declare that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are reigning as kings in the earth. Oh, Father, we thank you that we are not like those who are tossed to and fro or carried about by every wind of doctrine. We are grounded and rooted in your word. We declare that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts one for the other. We declare that we are the healed and not the sick. We have a sound mind and a sound body. We thank you and praise your name for that in Jesus' name. Lord God, now we pray for our service today. We declare, Father, in Jesus' name, that your spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, he will have free course in our service today. We are yielded unto him. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for the service today. We thank you that signs and wonders and miracles shall go forth, Father God, 
are following the word preached and we thank you in the name of Jesus as a result of the word being preached we declare in Jesus name that bodies will be healed in the name of Jesus we thank you for financial breakthroughs we thank you Lord God in the name of Jesus for preserving us and keeping us and we are increasing more and more and declare that wealth and riches are in our house in Jesus name if you believe that shout hallelujah Lord God, we thank you today and we declare what you have said about us, that we are the lender and not the borrower in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We are sowing bountifully and we are reaping a mighty harvest. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we are spirit-filled. We are bought for, paid for. In Jesus' name, we, Father God, are able to, Father God, exercise authority over the enemy. We do so today in the name of Jesus and by his blood we declare that Satan is defeated Father God and we are walking in victory in Jesus name hallelujah to your name Lord God we just thank you today and declare Father in Jesus name that we are energized we are revitalized in the name of Jesus we are powerhouses of God we are going forth making a mark that no man can erase you have equipped us Father for every good work in Jesus name we are influencers in the name of Jesus. We are influences in our workplace. We are influences in our home. Father, we are influences in our businesses. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are increasing us. We are living under an open heaven in the name of Jesus. And we declare it. We declare because, Father God, your word said that which we declare and decree, it shall be established. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Lord God, we just thank you today as we pray. We thank you, Lord God, that we are walking in victory. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We thank you that we are more than conquerors today. We are world overcomers because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We thank you we walk in divine favor. Your favor surround us like a shield. Father, we have favor in the sight of man, and we have favor in your sight. We thank you we have the the mind of Christ and we hold his thoughts we hold his intentions we hold his plan in the name of Jesus for our lives we give you praise and glory in Jesus name we thank you father that we are full of the Holy Ghost the unction from the Holy One that we know all things father God you give us understanding in every single thing and we give you praise and glory father if we all are getting we get an understanding thank you for wisdom father in the name of Jesus that only comes from you and only comes from your word and we thank you Lord God as we began to exercise by faith in the name of Jesus that which you have put on the inside of us we will see signs and wonders and miracles Father God unfold before our very eyes we thank you because we are a new creation we thank you Lord God that we are creators ourselves and we thank you Lord in the name of Jesus that you are opening the eyes of our understanding in Jesus name so that we can think in line with you with the same attitude that is in Christ Jesus is also in us. And we praise you and glorify your name for it. Come on and shout hallelujah if you believe those confessions. Hallelujah. And Father, now we pray for a lost and dying world. We thank you in the name of Jesus for laborers to cross their path today, not only in this church, but here from here to the farthest corners of this earth in Jesus' name. As we intercede for them today, we thank you, Father, that you are sending spirit-filled laborers to cross the path of those that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, that the, those who are um, witnessing, Father, in the name of Jesus would do so in a clear and concise manner that they will not be able to resist the drawing of the Holy Spirit to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior. We thank you as we intercede, we exercise our faith today by believing that blinding scales even now are falling from their eyes and the eyes of their understanding are being opened. We thank you that today thousands upon thousands, Father God, will have the opportunity to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Now, Lord God, we thank you today that you have heard our prayers, Father God, for the prayers of the righteous avails much and makes tremendous power available to the believer. We thank you in the name of Jesus that we are believing believers today, and that which we have prayed, we shall see a manifestation of it. Father, your word shall go forth unhindered or influenced by any outside forces today. We call ourselves what you call us. We thank you in the name of Jesus as we shout hallelujah and praise your name that the heavens are open up to us. We thank you in the name of Jesus as our pastors, Father, in the name of Jesus, begin to minister the word. The anointing shall rest upon them, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might in the name of Jesus. We thank you, for God, that your glory shall be revealed in this house in Jesus' name. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that as we serve today, we are serving as unto you and not unto man. Our eyes are upon you today in the name of Jesus. The anointing that is upon our pastors are upon us in Jesus' name. From the pulpit to the parking lot, we thank you there shall be a tangible anointing of your presence in this house. And as the praise team come forth, we declare, Father, that they will sing praises and, Father God, they will align their praise as we join in together and Father God that the angels Father God will join in with us today as we praise your holy name for you are great and greatly to be praised you are Jehovah Jireh our provider you are Jehovah Nisi the God our banner is upon us in Jesus name you thank you and praise you and glorify you we magnify your name today and bless your name forever and forever oh if you believe that shout hallelujah come on and shout hallelujah let's give God praise and glory in this house hallelujah oh we serve a mighty God we serve a wonderful God and we glorify your name hallelujah oh we thank you Jesus we praise you we glorify you we magnify you you are exalted in our midst and we thank you for it in Jesus name come on and shout hallelujah Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy of all glory, all honor, and all praise. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, New Beginnings. Good morning. We came to give God all the glory, honor, and praise today. Hallelujah. Psalms 136 stanza 24 says that Jesus has redeemed us from our enemies. For his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. He has redeemed us from our enemies. That's a good thing. <laughs> hallelujah. And Psalms 107 verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, that we have been redeemed from sickness and poverty. We have been redeemed from diseases. Hallelujah. We've been redeemed from having broken hearts. Hallelujah. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, lift your voices. We bless your name, Jesus. We have been redeemed. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We magnify you, Lord. And we bless your holy name. <laughs> glory to God. Put your hands together, new beginnings. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. I know, I know. Rescue my soul, his blood has cleansed my sin. I believe, I believe. Come on, say this with us. My shame, he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe, shout it out. I believe. We're gonna say that again. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has cleansed my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. 
raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. I know He rescued my soul. Has cleansed my spirit. I believe. I believe. Say this like you mean it. My shame, he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I believe. Say it again one more time. I know he rescued my soul. Has cleansed my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in His name. I believe. Shout it out. I believe. I'll raise the banner.
shout it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Our Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. We came to bless your name, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you for redeeming us, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for setting us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. 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 We believe in you, Lord. Somebody say, I believe. We believe in you, Father. Hallelujah. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe in you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For setting us free. Thank you, Lord, that your blood has cleansed us from our sins and washed us whiter than snow. No more shame. No more pain. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name. You hold my every moment. And you calm my rage and cease. You walk with me through fire. And you heal all my disease. I trust in you. I trust in you. And I believe you're my healer. And I believe you're all I need. You're all we need. Jesus, you're oh. all I need. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hold my every moment. You calm my rage and seas. You walk with me through the fire. Trust in you. I trust in you. Tell them I trust in you. portion and I believe you're more than enough Jesus you're all I need lift your voice say I believe and I believe you're all I need
nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Of your hand, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Hallelujah. You hold my world in the palm of your hand. Hallelujah.
He said that while you look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Because the things which are not seen are more real than the things that you see. He's a God of impossibilities. Yes, he is. When the devil said, I can't, when the, when the doctor said, I can't do nothing else, the Lord said, I can handle that. I got you. When your checkbook says zero, zero, sub zero, the Lord said, I'll provide all your needs. See, it's not, it's not what it looks like. It's not how much money you got. It's not how the x-rays look. It's not how the test came back. He is a God of impossibilities. And so what the world might say, no, the Lord says, yes. Yes, you will survive. Yes, you will live. Yes, you will overcome. Yes, you will. Oh my God, do you understand what I'm saying? So I just want you to think about that impossible thing, that mountain. That thing that, that seems like you just can't get over the hump with. And the Lord says, change your perspective. Because I already done took you over it, now you gotta walk in it. Oh! You already got the victory. All you got to do right now is just walk in. So when you, hey, I need some folks to start walking. I need some folks to start walking. Start walking like you're free. Start talking like you're free. Start acting like you're free. Start thinking like you're free. Start, 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 start. Start being free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh my God. You're his living. You're his living billboard. You're the testimony that he wants to speak out to the world of him being the God of impossibility. <laughs> Nothing is impossible to him. Oh my, my, my. Oh my, but some of y'all ain't took your lap yet. Some of y'all ain't start walking yet. That's just a part of your faith. That's just an act of your faith. Start walking like you're free. Start talking like you're free. Start thinking like you're free. Because he whom the Son says free is free indeed. Stop playing games with it. Stop coddling it and start walking. Start talking. Start being all that God has called you to be because he is a God of impossibilities. Yes, he is. 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 I'm going to give you one more time. See, your walking is an act of your faith. Your walking is an act of your faith. Your talking is an act of your faith. Your thinking is an act of your faith. So I want you to do one more lap for us. Start walking like you free. Let's go. Walk. Walk. You change the walk. You're free walk. In the palm of Walk. Walk in the name of Jesus. Walk in the name of Jesus. Look free. Be free. Stay free. Live free. You free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a God of impossibilities. While we look not at the things which we see, but we look at the things which we don't see. And I see you free. Nothing is impossible. palm of your hand, lift your voices, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Oh, nothing is impossible. Declare it today. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Declare it today. You hold my world in the palm of your hand. Hallelujah. Hey, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. 
listen, I hear the Spirit of God. She was exactly right. She, she, she hit that right on the head. Now, you know what I heard the Lord say? Just a little tidbit is missing. How many of y'all are believing God for a financial breakthrough? How many of y'all are believing God for a healing? How many of y'all are believing God for a better job? How many of y'all are believing God for a miracle? Perhaps the doctor have told you there's nothing else we can do. It's in the Lord's hand. Well, you know what I heard the Lord say? In addition to what my wife just said, he said, well, how then would you act if the breakthrough happened immediately? He said, that is what you need to do right now. What would you do if all your money came in? What would you do if your body got healed right now? That's it. That's all that the Lord told me. You do what you believe you would do. Listen, listen, listen. That is not what you would do. Some of you need 50,000. Some of you need 100,000. Some of you need 20,000. Let me tell you. I had to have a process done to my chest one year. That bill came to, I don't know, almost $30,000. And they had to go into my body and put something in there, right? Shoot, it, it couldn't have been 30 to 60 days. We got a letter from St. Dominic Hospital and said, your bill has been canceled. Ah, oh, y'all ain't got it. Look at here. I ain't giving you no $30,000 right now. You good. I'll send you $2.50 every month. <laughs> it, it, it was a huge number. And my wife, look, we read the letter, your debt of the uh, uh, the operation that you had in your heart came up to I don't know about thirty thousand dollars they did all kinds of stuff you know and he said that debt is now canceled you don't owe Dominic Hospital one dime you talking about shout well the Lord just said what would you do if your debt was canceled right now what would you do if you got your healing right now? What would you do if that 100000 came in? If that million dollars came in? So go ahead now. Don't wait till the battle is over to shout. You got to shout right now. Right now. Right now. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God.
my hand in the print of his hands and thrust my hand into his side. Jesus said, okay, go on and do all that handling. And so you can believe, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. But wait a minute, for all the Thomases around here, I just want you to know that you are walking in an impossibility right now. You're sitting in an impossibility right now. This wasn't supposed to be ours. This wasn't supposed to come through. Every bank in Mississippi said no, but God said yes. You're walking, when you walk through the doors, you're walking through impossibility. In order to make your faith leap, in order to make your faith jump, you ought to be so full when you come out of here because right now, this stuff ain't normal. This is supernatural stuff and you're walking and sitting and praising God in impossible possibilities right now in Jesus' name. Pastor Leslie came and and then Bishop came and I heard the Lord saying to me that what the devil meant for bad God will take that very thing and turn it for your good and if you would change your perception of a thing even that very impossible thing if you look at it through the eyes of God even the word impossible says I'm possible if you only change your perception of your impossibility and the word itself says I'm possible change your perception of a thing and look through it through the eyes of God and every impossibility that you have if you look through his eyes you would say I'm possible oh how many of us want to change that impossibility over turn it over to God and say nothing is impossible
because I'm possible. Oh, hallelujah in this place. Oh, we got to get a revelation of that right there. We got to get a revelation of that right there. That very thing that came to you up at night, that very thing that make you cry yourself to sleep, God is saying, look to my eyes and see that I'm possible. Oh, hallelujah. You know, sometimes you just gotta laugh at the devil. Ha ha ha! a beautiful thing. Praise God. You all can go ahead and have a seat if you can. Praise God. Woo! It's thick up here. Praise God. Hallelujah. I actually came to give the announcements. Praise God. God is a good God. Nothing. Nothing is impossible. Oh, my, my, my. If we hold on to that right there, nothing is impossible. And you may say, I've never seen anything like this before. Well, let me tell you, this is New Beginnings, baby. And we have membership classes every first, second, and third Sunday of every month. So if you want to get in on something good, come on and join New Beginnings, where it is an oasis of love. And every first, second, and third Sunday of every month, you can go to a membership class here and become a member of New Beginnings and live naturally supernatural lives in the name of Jesus. Those membership classes are held from 10 to 11, 15 a.m. So don't worry, you won't miss out. You'll get out just in time to be a part of praise and worship and what all God has for us here. Amen? Amen. We also have upcoming events. Let me start with this. Let me start with this because it's Thursday. Highland View Apartments. How many of you know New Beginners don't have an outreach department? We live lives of reaching out. It's what we do. It's who we are. And Thursday, this Thursday, at Highland View Senior Apartments. We're gonna be going there to bless the seniors there. Some things that we need donated are crackers, unsalted, cooking oil, honey nut Cheerios. Come on now, they does a heart good. Oatmeal individual packets, canned meat such as tuna, salmon, Vienna sausages, noodles, and then toiletries, paper towels, soap, toilet tissue. All of these things we can donate to our seniors so that they know that nothing is impossible. Yes. Minister Logan will be collecting these donations on Wednesday of this week. Minister Logan, please raise your hand. This lovely lady right here, she will be here on Wednesday from 10 to 12 collecting donations. So make sure you come between that time so that you're able to be a blessing to the seniors. Amen? Amen? Then on Saturday, somebody say Saturday. Oh, say this Saturday. Y'all not ready for it yet. Let me tell you a story. It was a few years ago, Bishop started saying, in the year of 2020, the greatest known illness will be mental health issues. And it was about 2015, y'all, 2017, 2016, somewhere up in there. 2020 was a way away, a ways away. And he would say it all the time. 
Then 2020, the pandemic hit. And from that day to this, where mental health issues is wrecking, is running rampant. And God pre-warned us through the man of God. Praise God. Because the Holy Spirit will show you things to come that you know not of. And this Saturday, ladies, and all the ladies that you know, your daughters, your granddaughters, your aunties, your nieces, Pastor Leslie is having a women's meeting on the mind. Hallelujah. Go ahead and clap for that. Go ahead and clap for that. It will be focused on the mind because Glory even God. as thy soul prospers, yes. Jesus came not only to heal disease, but dis-ease. And Pastor Leslie is going to just let loose on us Saturday. You don't want to miss it. Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Yes, Lord. Bring somebody with you. Don't come alone. You don't want to miss it. Ladies, this is for us. Saturday morning, who's all going to be here? That's everybody. Praise God. If you don't have this or you need information on that, let us know because we want to make sure that all of the ladies are blessed. And not only the ladies, and we have a senior outreach, we have something for the ladies, we cannot forget about our babies. All right, y'all. Trunk or treat, let me hear it. Let's hear it for trunk or treat. And you may say, what is trunk or treat? I'm so glad you asked. Trunk or treat is where you see these boxes and everything as you come in with all that candy filled in it. That's for our babies. Because we believe that we serve a God of El Shaddai, a God of more than enough. And that's what your children are being taught in children's church. So on October 30th at 4 p.m., when they come, they want to see El Shaddai in the parking lot. So that means we need to have our cars out there. We need to have them uh, fixed up with our trunks open. And we need to let them just go from trunk to trunk, from car to car. Bring your car. I'm going to have my car out there. I don't know what it's going to be yet, y'all. But it's going to be something. Right? Because the kid's faith is on the line. And they got big faith. And we want to let them know they got big faith in a big God. Amen. And trunk or treat, October 30th at 4 p.m., right here at our own location, is where we can show our kids that they serve a big God. Amen. So if you would like to sign up, members of New Beginnings, if you would like to sign up to have your car out there, go ahead and put some streamers on it or something. And put it on out there in the parking lot. Sign up out in the back there on the table that you'll be having your car as a part of Trunk or Treat. Who's all going to have their car a part of Trunk or Treat? Oh, that's everybody. I love it. Praise God for participation. Y'all need to get excited about the kids, I'm telling you. Oh, ho, 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 ho. See there? How many of you know God also rewards? It's a prize for whoever has the best decorated car. That's going to be me. I'm going to go ahead and win that. Minister Logan said that's her. That's a challenge. I'm going to go ahead and win that. Praise God. There will be a prize for the best car. Amen. It's okay to have fun at church. Amen. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are having Sunday service every Sunday in person. Amen. In person services every Sunday at 11 a.m. Invite somebody to come. We are still on Facebook Live. Oh, hello, Facebook Live family. We are still on Facebook Live, and we are having our services every Sunday. And that is the end of our anointed announcements. But I want to show you all one thing, because you know during holiday season, sometimes there are different schedules and different times of services. Look what, look what Bishop has created for us. This is a holiday service. When you leave out today,
make sure you pick one up. It gives you the schedule. Look, it doesn't look beautiful. Yes. It gives you the schedule of everything that we have going on at New Beginnings during the holiday season. So you won't miss a service. You won't have to guess what time it is. You have it right at your fingertips. Do we have any first time visitors? If this is your very first time visiting New Beginnings, please just stand. If this is your very, I won't have you say anything. We just want to recognize you. Praise God. We just want to recognize you. Hallelujah. Right Glory now, someone will be sit, passing you out one of these booklets here. Stay, please stand until you receive it. Thank you. Thank you. If you open it up on the inside, you will see a welcome letter. That's from Bishop and Pastor Leslie, just for you. Welcoming you into our home because you're not just a visitor here at New Beginnings. You are guest in our home, and you could have been anywhere this morning, and you chose to come here, and we are thankful for that. Also in that envelope, and that you will see this card, please fill this card out in its entirety, and just turn it into the offer, offering receptacle as it passes by, or as you pass by it. Amen. Let's give our first-time guests one more round of applause. That is the end of our anointed announcements. I will turn you back over to our appointed, anointed, dynamic music. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We like the way you say that. <laughs> Nobody says it like you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. In Isaiah 54, the song that we're getting ready to minister is, is declaring that because God is the greatest power, that we shall never be defeated. Hallelujah. How many of you know you, that you need to be careful who you listen to in this day and time? You got to be really careful who you're listening to. And the devil, first of all, we need to make this clear. The devil is a liar. The thief comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we would have everlasting life and more have life more abundantly so we want to listen we don't want to listen to the liar hallelujah we want to listen to the truth God's word is the truth his word shall never return void hallelujah and his word is what we need to be having coming out of our mouth amen we need to speak the word on in every situation no matter what you're going through in your life speak the word hallelujah and know that you're going to rise and that you shall be and that you're going to go in victory. Hallelujah. We want you to declare that right now. Say, I shall rise. I shall be. And I shall go. I'm going in victory. Hallelujah. Because God is the greatest power. Why? Because God is the greatest power. Why? Because God's word is the greatest power. Last time. Why? Because God is the greatest power, and we shall never be defeated. Hallelujah. <laughs> I shall rise, and I shall be. I shall go in victory. No weapon form against me will ever overtake me. I shall rise and I shall be and I shall go in victory. No weapon form against me will ever Overtake me, and because God is the greatest power, we shall never, will never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never.
never be defeated. I shall rise. And I shall be. And I will go in victory. No weapon form against me will ever overtake. a liar and God is exalted we'll never be defeated we will never be defeated hallelujah the devil is a liar and God is exalted we'll never be defeated we'll never be defeated the devil is a liar lift your voices God is exalted be defeated. We will never be defeated. The devil is a liar and God is exalted. We'll never be defeated. We will never be defeated. The devil is a liar and God is exalted. We'll never be defeated. We will never be defeated. The devil is a liar, and God is exalted. We will never be defeated. We will never be defeated. The devil is a liar, and God is exalted. Never be defeated. We will never be defeated. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. We'll never be defeated. We'll never be defeated. The devil is a liar. 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 He keeps on lying. Don't listen to that voice. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar, but God is exalted.
want you to lift your voices if you believe it. God is exalted. God is exalted. God is exalted. God is exalted. And we will never be defeated. We'll never be defeated. Never need it. We'll never be defeated. How many of you believe that? never be defeated. I said, how many of you know we'll never be defeated? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I tell you, I'm turned on to preach the word this morning. I'm on fire. I feel like I'm at a football game. I don't know where y'all at. I feel like I'm at a football game and I'm ready to bust up somebody. I'm ready to do the work of the ministry. Now you can sit down for a minute. Whether you know it or not, I'm very aggressive in a godly way. And I believe, you know, when you go to them football games, everybody is fired up. I mean, they rocking, throwing them hands up. Some guys don't have no shirts on. All kinds of things are happening. And I believe that we ought to be the same way. Now you keep your shirt on though, just keep your shirt on. I believe we ought to be the same way about the things of God. We shouldn't just go through the motions. I don't believe in going through the motions on nothing. I believe that you ought to be involved with what you're doing, guys. And so that's why I'm excited. That's why I'm the leader, too. You got to have a strong leader who's ready to move forward with the marching orders of what the Lord wants. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for that wonderful song. Amen. Praise God. Oftentimes, you know, we get our energy from you guys as well. We can sense when you're with us. When you're not with us, it's okay, let's just have a normal old service. But how many of you know, who wants a normal service? I believe every service ought to be supernatural. Man, I believe we ought to put some energy in what we're doing, amen? Not just nonchalant. I don't believe in nonchalant. I believe in getting excited and go tell everybody that Jesus is Lord, amen? Now, let's talk about that uh, trunk or tree. I didn't see too much excitement. Well, that's an alternative for the kids. Instead of going to Halloween parties and doing all these other things, you know, we give our kids an alternative. So we have trunk or treat where we encourage our members to bring your vehicle, lift the trunk up, decorate your car. Like this year, my wife and I, we're thinking about doing Batman. 
something. You got to get involved. We complain about kids stealing and robbing and killing folk, but you don't have nothing for them. So they're going to keep stealing and robbing. You got to have alternatives. And that's we, we're talking about the church. Quit complaining so much and give our young people an alternative. Give them something to do. Amen. And if you don't give them nothing to do, you ain't, who are you to complain? There's nothing to do. And I continue to hear people say, ain't nothing, ain't no action in Jackson. We, 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 we got to come up with some action. So what are the kids? They run to Atlanta. They run to where? Texas. They run to, because there's no action in Jackson. So we got to create our own action. We got to create our own excitement. There's got to be something to do. There's got to be some form of entertainment, something for young Christians to get involved with. Not just young, but some of us, they got a little age on us as well. And so that's why we have new beginnings. We are a ministry that's exciting. And we're going about touching the lives of people. So with this trunk or treat, we need everybody to get involved. You bring your cars out there, we line them up. Last time we did this, of course, we couldn't do it because of the pandemic. So people stopped going to church, right? And we still don't have all our members back. We got about 50% of them back. That's it. The other 50% I don't know. Maybe they're at the JSU game or somewhere or at a pro game or they're somewhere, Sam's Club, because I see them. Okay, so I don't get it no more. Okay, it's time to come back to church. If you can go to all them other places, I was just talking with my wife, and my wife said, calm down, honey. I, I don't get it no more. I, I really don't get it. When you can go to, what, at the Michigan game. I'm from Michigan, so I like watching them Wolverine. They had 115,000 folk at the game. 100, they call it the big house. 115,000 folk at a football game. Ain't nobody thinking about coronavirus. They thinking about the game. Jackson State, they packing out the stadium. Ain't nobody thinking about no corona. We, we there to support them Tigers. Or Alcorn or whatever school you go to. There's plenty of people. At the high school game, there's stacks of people at the high school game. I believe they call it what, Friday Night Lights? Come on, y'all gonna have to talk. Y'all gotta talk. Talk to me. There's folk everywhere. But until you get to church house, I don't quite get that. But we're gonna move on anyway. Amen. You can't wait from everybody. What did Harriet Tubman say? Hey, some of them folk just gonna stay jacked up. We moving forward. It's time to go forward, man. It's time to do what God has called us to do. I don't care what world you might be in, school teacher, doctors, whatever area you might be in, we can represent the kingdom. And we ought to do it with excitement. We ought to do it with vigor. Come on now. Not nah, well, praise the Lord. We will come rejoicing, bringing in the chief, bringing in the... I ain't following that. I'm not doing that. I'm going to go where the action is. I need to find somebody that's excited about Jesus. Come on, now stop all this passivity. Y'all gonna make me change my sermon up in here. It's too much passivity in the body of Christ. It's time to get excited and take back what belonged to us. We are the body of Christ. Come on now, we are the triumphant church. Just going through the mud. <laughs> Who wants to be a part of that? I know I don't. I don't want no part of that. It's time to get excited about what Jesus is doing. Why? He's on his way back. And he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a triumphant church. He's coming back for an exciting church. I mean, how would I feel if I walk in the door and my wife don't get excited no more? We're the bride. And Jesus is just the groom. He's coming back for his bride. And when I get there, my wife is excited. When she comes, I get excited. Now, oh, pff, here she is. That's how we treat church. Well, we at church, whatever, Jesus, yeah, whatever. You think Jesus is coming back for a bride like that? Man, we got to get excited about every part of ministry, every part of life. We got to get involved. 
We got to do something. Come on, guys. Amen. I thought I'd just encourage you. Amen. Exhort you for a hot minute. Amen. Praise God. So don't forget, ladies, this coming Saturday, hey, you got fresh man of women's meeting. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't ever have to be a member. Just bring your little old stuff on out. And ladies, y'all going to have a good time. You're going to have a lot of visitors. There's going to be a lot of women up in here. Let's get excited about what God is doing. Now, you're not coming in here talking about how bad people are and this. Oh, no, we're in this fight together. We're here to help each other. You are our community, our family. We're here to help each other. We're striving for excellence together. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. So I need to see, you know, we're not God's chosen frozen. Come on, we're not God's chosen frozen. Show me something. Where is your zeal? If you want to be with me, somebody might say, show me something. Well, I'm with her. Huh? Shoot, I can do that all by myself. There, there ought to be some joy in your face. When you come into the house of God, my God, put your hands together. Do something. Didn't he die for you? Didn't he go to the cross for you? Didn't he go through the garden of Gethsemane? Didn't he hang his head and die? For us to sit here, well, we will come rejoice and bring it. What is that? Can't nobody do you like Jesus? Your husband can't do you like Jesus. Your wife can't do you like Jesus. Your best friend can't do you like Jesus. Man, we ought to get excited when somebody say, Jesus, hey! Who don't you yell? Whoa! Well, Jesus, well, whatever. Come on, guys. Let's get more zealous about the things of God. Let's become more zealous. Just, how do you become? Just do something. Shake your leg, move your hand, shake your head, do something for God. My right, God. Somebody said, well, I'm excited. Well, you need to let your face show it. Got to be some zeal and excitement. Well, let's just go through the motion. Who wants to go to that? Man, we get excited when we go to the JSU games or the Alcorn games and all the other schools here. Man, we get excited. How do, we, how do you know this? We have that pre-game festivity. What do you call it? Tailgate. I thought about doing some tailgate in that church. They tailgate before they go up in them games. My wife and I had never went to one until we moved down here in 1995. We went to a Jackson State tailgate. Oh, my God. The food was off the chain. The music, the this, that. Why? They getting prepped for what's going to happen. What's going to happen in the game. And then when the guys came out of the huddle, that was when Kamaji was the coach. Thank God for the new coach now, but when Kamaji was the coach, look at here. Them fellas came out pumped. Man, I stood up through, I threw my hands up. Hey, why? I'm a fellow athlete. I know what it's about. We're about to go to war. We're about to go to war. You don't go to war. Well, I believe we're going to just beat the other enemy. Oh, no, you got to have some excitement. You got to have some zeal. You got to have the eye of the tiger. Hey, I play sports. You better have the eye of the tiger. You can tell when the opponent is scared. Just look in their eyes. They look fearful. I know we're going to blow y'all out. When I got here, South Panola High School was killing everybody. They were destroying the whole entire state of Mississippi, South Panola, when I got here. Them boys didn't even want to go in their yards. They didn't even want to go to South Panola. They were scared that South Panola even came. How you know? I talked to some of them. Man, they, they bigger than us. They quicker. They're faster. They outcoach this, that. They're scared, as you would say, scared. 
what you're scared about. He has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. I can't lose with what I've chosen. I got Jesus on my side. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ when strengthens me. I'm going to bust the devil head up in here. You got to get excited about this thing. That's why everybody can't be no athlete. You ain't got no excitement up in you. You got to have some swag. The great athletes got a little swag to them. What's up? We going to do some damage up in here. You can't, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you going to get blowed out. You got to have some swag. It's not cockiness. It's the righteousness of God. A righteous indignation. I heard somebody say something I thought was real funny. They said it's something about folk who really love Jesus. They get ugly when they praise in God. Now, you know what? You ain't got to get ugly, but it's almost like you're smelling boo-boo. You, man, when you get serious about the thing, I'm going to bust you up. You ain't coming in here just ain't got no facial nothing. You come in here to praise the Lord. Why? The devil's trying to steal your family. He can't have my family. He can't take my money. He can't take my neighborhood. Some of you, your family running straight to hell. My God, you need to start praying and fasting. You got to get mad at the devil. Well, praise the Lord, brother, brother. Oh, no, that ain't going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. You got to get excited about this thing. You got to get involved. And that's the kind of church I pastor. I have pastored thousands of people. And I pastored a few folks. Let me tell you, you got the same person here. It's going to require uh, when the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent go have to take it by force. Taking back what the devil stole from us. He's had his way in our life long enough. He's been defeated and he's under my feet. <laughs> That's what we talking about. When you come to church, ain't no sissies. Oh no, you get busted up. That's what's gonna happen. We here to knock the devil out. We ain't here to play no games. I ain't here. Even when I play sports, I'm planning on blowing you out of here. I don't care if it's Monopoly. I want to blow you out. It's just that you got to have that in you. My God, my God. <laughs> Woo! Do I got any soldiers in here? Well, you know what, Howard? I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. Do I got any soldiers? I need some soldiers. I said, I need some soldiers that are willing to fight. Mm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as we come to you today, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. Lord, we thank you that your word shall go forth and it shall not return void but it shall accomplish what it was set forth to do. And Father, we just thank you today. 
that we're soldiers in the army of the Lord, that we're not here just punching in and then punch out just to say we've been to church. But Lord, we're here to be about your business. And Father, we thank you that your word shall go forth unhindered, and it shall accomplish what it was set forth to do. That is the first of all, feed our spirit, man. Then to renew our minds and heal our physical body. And Father, I thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the hearts of your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Lord, we covenant with you in advance to give you all the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through your holy written word or through gifts of the Spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, you may be seated. Hallelujah, glory to God. Well, the last time I was here with you, of course, last week, my wife and I were not here. Uh, we was at a homegoing service of a pastor friend of mine, Pastor Dr. Stanley Scott. Amen. He passed away at 76, and my wife and I went there to be a part of that homegoing service. But I left you in good hands with Minister Tim. Amen. Praise God. And Minister Sandra Logan. Amen. Turn with me to Psalms 25. Psalms 25, I just felt like stirring you up a little bit. Amen. Pray. Sometimes we need to be stirred up. Amen. We're not God's chosen frozen. No, but we, we, we're part of the kingdom of God. Psalms 25, we're going to pick up where we left off at several weeks ago. Psalms 25, and let's pick up there at verse 5. Psalms 25, verse 5, it says here, Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. And I love part B. On thee do I wait all the day. On thee do I wait all the day. Then turn with me to Psalms 130. The 130 division of Psalms, Psalms 130 and verse 5. It says, I wait for the Lord. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Hmm. In his word do I hope. Verse 6 says, my soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Then Psalms 37, another one of our text scriptures, Psalms 37. And we're on the subject of the blessings of waiting on the Lord. The blessings of waiting on the Lord. Psalms 37 and verse 7 says this, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. But notice there, part A says what? Rest in the Lord and do what? And wait patiently for him. And then one more text scripture, Psalms 40 Psalms 40, I encourage you just jot the scriptures down. Yeah, we, 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 we got to get ready. We got to get in position for the blessings of the Lord. Certain things that we must do. Psalms 40 and verse 1, the psalmist says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And notice here what the Amplified classic edition that simply renders more clarification to the given text scripture says about Psalms 40 verse 1 uh, the amplified classic edition put it this way I waited patiently and expectantly I waited patiently and expectantly uh, we've already talked about that word wait in the Hebrew the Hebrew word is quava which means to wait actively with anticipation. It means to wait actively with anticipation. Uh, 
Uh, some people, you know, when you see that word wait, some people think that that means not to do anything at all. Well, I'm waiting on the Lord. You know, I'm not praying. I'm not meditating. I'm doing nothing. I'm just simply what? I'm just waiting on the Lord. Uh, some people think that that word wait means to be unemployed, empty, don't do anything. Just sit back and, and just wait. I'm waiting on the Lord. Yet I hear the Lord say, I'm waiting on you. Yeah, but that word wait from the Hebrew means to wait actively. Oh, I like that. Wait actively, uh, which uh, uh, it tells us that you're doing something while you're waiting. And you are anticipating. I'm not going to go back into the different uh, sport analogies about anticipating. How many of you were here several Sundays ago and we talked about in football how that the ball is thrown to a spot on the field and it's up to you to get in place to get a blessing. And what does that tell us? That the blessings of God are positional. You got to get to that spot. Just like in football, I don't want to get back into that because we got a whole lot more to cover today. You got to run a certain route, get to that spot, and the ball will be thrown there. And it is there where God has your blessing. So you got to get there where God wants you to be. Not just get anywhere you can't just go anywhere or any place you want to be, but you got to get there where God wants you to be. Uh, because if you're not where you're supposed to be, the ball will get intercepted. Somebody else will be there to get your blessing. Come on now. Yeah, that word wait, I love this here. It says, hopefully wait for God to act. Ooh, that's good. Hopefully wait for God to act. Yeah, we're talking about that word wait. Wait means to hope, anticipate, and to trust. Wait means to expect and look forward. Wait means to refrain from needless fear and worry. Wait means to be patient and quiet. Wait means to totally depend on God. Have you guys ever got frustrated in waiting on the Lord? Anybody can show by a show of hands. Uh, do we have any honest folk in the building? Uh, sometimes it's like, Lord, when are you going to show up? But like the old saying, he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Huh? Somebody said, well, pastor, how long do I got to wait? Wait for what? Your breakthrough, you know, your money, your job, uh, your healing, whatever it might be, your mate. Lord, my God, I'm 45, and Lord, I want to get married. Or Lord, I'm this, I'm that. When is my job? Well, you got to wait. Well, how long do I got to wait? Well, waiting on the Lord, as we've already covered, it means to be willing to wait for however long it takes. It means to wait for however long it takes. Huh? Amen. Praise God. And someone might be thinking, is my fruit producing season ever going to come? Lord, have mercy. I done worked hard. I have believed intensely. Have you ever been there before? Lord, I done worked hard now. I've been in the vineyard. I've worked hard. I believe intensely. And I've waited a long time when you're coming, Lord. Have you ever felt like sometimes this faith stuff just don't work? This church stuff, watch this now, church just don't work for me. Have you ever been there before? Because you've been waiting so long and believing so intensely, you just get to the point where you got to be careful what you allow to come out your mouth because death and life are in the power of your tongue. You'll start saying, this church stuff ain't for me. This faith stuff don't work. So then we moved on from there. I encourage you to stay on track and don't give up because your due season is on its way. I encourage you to stay on track. Just keep what, doing what you know to do. Whatever you've been doing all along, keep on doing it. Why? Your due season is coming. Then we went to Genesis chapter 8. I'm going quick here just to review. Uh, we talked about seed time and harvest. Remember over there in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, he said seed time. This is what the Lord said. There is seed time 
and harvest. That's a law that has been put in this earth. See, you plant the seed, then you give it some time, and then you'll see a harvest. Then we went to Galatians 6, 9. It said, in due season, you'll reap if you don't faint. One translator said, fall by the wayside. Then we went to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. It said, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. And I love what James chapter 1, verse 4 said. It said, let patience have her perfect work. In other words, get back on the operating table of life. Allow the Holy Spirit or allow patience to continue to work on you. Sometimes we want to hop up from the table. <clears throat> now, why? Because, see, there is no promise without process. There is no promise without process. Amen? And so we moved on from there, began to talk about that growth process. And we use a natural example of a tree development. I stated that before a fruit-producing tree stands to blossom and reaches fruit-producing season, first of all, it sends roots, roots down deep into the earth and where it can draw a constant source of nourishment as it continues to be nourished from below. You can't quite see it, but then second, it'll begin to send up limbs upward and outward. Now, during the life of that tree, it must endure during the life of that tree, it must endure the elements of every season. We're talking about the tree of your life. We're talking about you and I. Uh, but during that time, you must endure the elements of every season when you're waiting on the Lord. You know, when you're waiting on the Lord, you got to endure every season. Uh, you got seed, time, and harvest. Uh, but you got to endure the elements of each season, which might be heat. Might be cold, might be sleet, might be rain, and depending on where you live, it might be a little snow too. Uh, but you're believing God and you're waiting on the Lord. Amen? Praise God. So uh, we begin to uh, talk about uh, uh, during the life of that tree, again, it must endure the elements of every season. But because the roots are deeply tapped into a source of strength and nourishment and energy, the tree can outlast. The tree, because it's deeply rooted, are y'all with me? Because the tree is deeply rooted, and we talked about Psalms 1, uh, that we become that tree that's beside the rivers of water. See, we're talking about our lives, your life and my life, because we're deeply rooted into the things of God. So when we go through our seasons, before productivity comes, we'll be able to stand. We'll stand through the sleep. We'll stand through the rain. We'll stand through the heat. And we'll even stand during the snow. Why? Because we are beside the rivers of living water. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, uh, and I, I finally said this too. I said, complaining and murmuring. Let's talk about that for a hot second. Oftentimes when you're waiting on the Lord and you're waiting on your breakthrough, you're waiting on your deliverance, you're waiting on your money, you're waiting on a husband or a wife, you're just sitting back waiting. Oftentimes we get to complaining and murmuring. And one thing that we found out that complaining and murmuring will only further delay your productivity in life you will delay your productivity. It's not going to come any faster murmuring. How I many of you think that sometimes, now, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what you're going to be, but sometimes you feel like a little murmuring and complaining kind of helps out. It don't help not one iota. In fact, what it will do is delay you getting your breakthrough. It will delay your money coming. It will delay your deliverance. It will delay things. What, what will? Murmuring and complaining. Amen? I said amen. amen. Now let's talk about the benefits of waiting on the Lord. Let's talk about the benefits of waiting on the Lord. Glory to God. Turn with me to Isaiah 40. I did a real quick review, y'all. <laughs> Isaiah 40. Now let's talk about the benefits. This is what will happen if you learn to wait on the Lord. Isaiah 40, verse 30, uh, back up verse 29. He gives power to the faint 
And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. And that's the day in which we live. You know how the Bible tells us over in the Gospels that in the last days, are y'all listening? It said, in the last days, young men's hearts shall fail them. Why? Because of what has come upon the earth. It seemed like, I don't know, it seemed like every other month, something like that. Every other month, my wife and I hear about young people committing suicide. See how quiet it gets? Because you know it to be true. You might even know somebody who's done that, and my heart goes out to you big time. My wife and I, our church family, we love you. Our heart goes out to you. But there's a lot of things that have come up on the earth. It's just, it really happened big two years ago. It's called COVID. I did so many funerals, graveside funerals. You get tired of doing them. Now, no, 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 then, oh, God. No doubt, COVID is straight from hell. Yeah. <laughs> Satan, John 10, 10, comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Are you guys with me? So young men's hearts are failing them. For some strange reason, this COVID is jacked up. And excuse my vocabulary, y'all. I, you know, God bless you. But it has jacked up a lot of Christians. I have never seen nothing like this. I've been saying, look, this year I turned 60. In all the years I've been born again. I've been saved since I was 12 years old. Got filled with the Holy Spirit at 12. I have never seen nothing like this that has messed up Christians that bad. I mean, it ain't like you always been rich, so now you ain't got no money. So what? What? Just suck it up. Just suck it up. Are you guys with me? Who cares? I mean, you've seen people pass. You've seen poverty. You've seen where you didn't have enough. And people still went to church. It's been the Hong Kong flu, been the measles, been this. Come on, name them. Google it. If you go ahead and Google viruses, there is so many viruses. And yet we still now get more flu shots, folks. Getting flu shots, getting this shot, that shot. Everybody ain't dying from corona. Don't be crazy. Now, corona might have started some, jacked up some stuff and, and really pushed it hard, but I'm telling you, people are dying from all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of viruses out there. The government ain't even told us everything. You can't, because we'll panic as a nation. We'll panic as a people. You can't tell it all. But it never stopped us from going to church. But now, look. We shall be like a tree planted beside the river. But there are benefits of waiting on the Lord. And don't forget, wait don't mean sit still and do nothing. That means you got to anticipate. You're waiting on God to move. And whatever it takes and however long it takes, you got to be willing to stay. Stand your ground. Find a neighbor right now and tell them, stand your ground. Tell them, I don't care what you go through. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm not prophesying nothing. It's all in the Bible. Times will get worse, but times will get better. You ain't seen nothing yet. I won't let nothing, I hear the Apostle Paul say, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Peril, sword, stress, death, life. Paul said, I ain't going to let nothing stop me from praising the Lord. That's life. Keep moving. Well, what if something happens? Whatever. I'm still moving forward. Yeah. Somebody say, well, what happened to that brother? Well, he died believing God. What other way is there to die? Amen. That's right. 
other than believe in God. This ain't the time to get over in fear. Find a neighbor right now. Say, neighbor, this ain't the time to get in fear. Let me tell you what fear will do. It'll cause you to conjure up some mess. You can get so fearful where you will start conjuring up mess. What's that? I remember years ago, years ago, let's go back into the 70s. Let's go back into the 70s. Uh oh, when everybody was talking about there's a demon. There's a demon over there, a demon over there. There's a demon behind the tree. Yeah, there's one right there. I mean, everything was demon, demon, demon. People got over into fear. And you'll start conjuring up mess. Now it's October, right? Halloween season. That's what the world call it, right? We call it Harvest Fest. The Christians, we call it Harvest Season, right? They showing every demonic movie on TV right now, at the movies, commercials, right? Trying to get you over into what? Fear. And boy, they paint an incredible picture, don't they? And if you ain't careful, you'll conjure up some mess. What's that? Nothing. It's nothing. My God. What's that that brushed across my foot? It was the cat you bought. What's that? People just scared of everything. That's a disease behind that. Let me wipe that down. Oh, Lord, I mean, just doing everything. And some of you don't get mad. I ain't drop your rocks. I ain't talking about you. I know some folk that can be out on 100 acres of land. No, I'm going to leave that alone. Let's move on. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave that thing alone. But you better watch yourself. You'll conjure up some mess and it's not there. What do you call this new stuff, honey, that they, they, they keep coming up with all these schemes? and Ah, oh, well, they trying to say something is there and it's conspiracy theory. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. They got so many conspiracy theories out, and some of y'all believe in them. You get so in that fear, fear will conquer you. That's why Paul told Timothy, what? For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. The Apostle John not St. John the Baptist, but the Apostle John was the longest living apostle or disciple of Christ. You get over there into 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, he spent the longest time with the Lord. And so we see there he learned so much. And one of the greatest things that he learned, praise God, was about the love of God. Let me tell you, they tried to, to, to frick aside John, they tried to boil him in oil. They tried to poison John. They couldn't. Why? Because he had a perfected love wall. He wasn't over into fear. Fear kill you. Fear will destroy you. You got to perfect your love walk. You got to increase your love walk. If you want to fight these pandemics and the different fears and all that, perfect your love walk. Now go ahead and do what you got to do from the natural. I ain't got no problem with that because my wife and I, we practice the natural as well. We're building up our immune system. You know, we got our own little vitamins, D3 and B complex, this, that. Oh, we, we do that. That's called corresponding action. But at the same token, we can't get over into fear. I wouldn't even be up here preaching. All oh, y'all breathing right now. Y'all got the virus. It, it wouldn't be no church. Can't you see where the devil going with this? And you, listen, once you take the, the day go come when the church is taken out of here. It's called the rapture. And when the church leave here, you ain't seen hell. When the church leave this earth, Holy Spirit's leaving. Hell, you ain't seen no hell. And when the church is raptured, oh, Jesus. And that's what the devil you see what he's trying to do? He's trying to get shut the church down. Yeah. Wow. The church is no longer essential. Yeah. That was the whole idea behind the plague. There's always been plagues. You got to believe God. Put the blood over your doors. Post there. Put the blood. Let that death angel pass on by. 
Use the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus. Well, you don't know, I contacted the bar. So? Yeah, what? 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 So what? Believe God through it. That it won't last but a day or two. Get back on up, put your war clothes on, keep moving forward. The devil wants to stop you in your track. He wants to destroy the church. That's the whole idea behind it, destroy the church. The church is just getting back in. I know of churches that don't even meet yet. And when we're not together, forsake not the fellowshipping of the brethren, it's so very important that we come together. Why? That corporate anointing. That corporate anointing is so strong. <coughs> Isaiah 40. Let's read, let's read verse 31. Now I tell you, that corporate anointing, ooh-wee, there's something about that corporate anointing. Verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Come on. They that wait on the Lord, he shall renew what? Your strength. He shall mount up with wings as an eagle, and they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So number one, we're talking about the benefits of waiting on the Lord. Number one, renewed strength. That's what happens when you wait on the Lord. You'll get renewed strength. The Message Bible put it this way. He energizes those who get tired. He will energize you when you wait on the Lord. I looked that word up, renew, renew strength. It said it means to watch this. Make new. Make new your strength. Restore your strength. Revive your strength. Regenerate your strength. Stimulate your strength. Restart your strength. Reinforce your strength. Revitalize your strength. And I like this last one. Rekindle. This is what happens when you wait on the Lord. I like to put it this way. God will supersize your strength and ability. He'll supersize your strength. He'll supersize your strength. Number two, the second benefit of waiting on the Lord. The scripture says there in verse 31 that you will mount up with wings like an eagle. The message Bible put it this way. They soar like eagles. If you guys ever seen an eagle soar, eventually we're going to have our fiber optics up here and our media stuff up here where while I'm preaching, soar like an eagle. It's going to be a huge eagle soaring off a mountain. That's what we're working on now. We're working on putting our media packets together where we're going to have all this stuff together. Amen. Praise God. It'll help you better see what I'm talking about. Second thing is what? You're soaring like an eagle. What is it about an eagle? When a storm comes, that eagle has the ability to rise to a higher altitude to avoid disturbance. Ooh, he has the ability to go higher, to a higher altitude to avoid the storm. Well, that's how it'll be with you and I. As born-again believers, that when all hell come your way, when hell come to your family, when hell come to your finances, you'll be able to soar above the storm. Why? Because you decided to wait on the Lord. Number three, you'll run and not get weary. Whew. You'll run and not get weary. The Message Bible put it this way. They will walk and don't lag behind. Uh, you, you'll walk and, and don't lag behind. Or you won't get exhausted and fall by the wayside. This is what happens when you wait on the Lord. You do what you're supposed to do. You're meditating in God's word as we've already talked about. When you put a new song in your mouth, glory to God, you got to worship on your lips and you're meditating in the scriptures. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're waiting on the Lord. Hey, you're a sore like an eagle. 
then you'll run and not get weary. I look up that word weary. When you wait on the Lord, you won't get weary. When you wait on the Lord, you won't get weary. Weary means lose heart. Have you ever seen a person lose heart and don't finish the race? They just stop running. I've seen that. I ran track before as well. I've seen people just quit right in the middle of a race. I've seen people in life just quit throwing the towel. I've seen people quit on their marriages. I've seen people quit on their relationships. I've seen people quit in life and they just throw their hands up and said, I quit. I'm going to just throw in the towel. It's over. But this is what happened when you wait on the Lord. When you learn how to wait on the Lord, uh, you won't get weary. You won't lose heart. Here's another definition. Get exhausted. You're going to find yourself somewhere here. <laughs> you will locate yourself where you just, you're just exhausted. You got to learn to wait on the Lord. Here's another word, fatigued. We've all been there. You're just fatigued. Why? You got to learn to wait on the Lord. You got to keep waiting on the Lord. Well, how long I got to wait until you get energized? You got to keep going. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Well, they cheating on me. They're against me. The whole system against me. Nobody understands me. I can't get a break. Come on. I've been there. I've been there, done that. But you got to keep going. Why'd they do it to me? Why'd they come against me? What had to happen to me? Why do we look like that when we... <laughs> Why is it got to happen to me? Yeah, but you got to learn to wait on the Lord. <laughs> he will, with the temptation, make a way of escape. He'll come right in the middle of wherever you at. He'll show up with you. That tells you right there that you're going to go through. That's all a part of life. It's called a part of your 100-fold return. It's with what? Persecution. He'll show up right in the middle of you. I don't understand. He'll show up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He'll be the fourth man show up in the fiery furnace. But he'll show up in the furnace, which means the furnace can come your way. But he'll show up in the midst. But when you come out, you won't smell no burn. Your clothes won't be on fire. Your head won't be on fire. You won't lose your mind. <laughs> Come on, certain things you go through in life, you feel like you're going to lose your mind. Up in here, up in here. You're going to make me lose my mind. Sometimes you feel that way. Uh -uh, but oh, when you wait on the Lord, he'll renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings like an eagle. When you run, you won't get weary. And when you walk, you won't faint. You got to wait on the Lord now. Boy, I feel like preaching just, just a little bit. I feel like just a little bit. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. So weary means lose heart, get exhausted, fatigue, drain. Have you ever felt drained? Just drain. How about, oh man, Webster's Dictionary said this about the word weary. Here's the next one, weary, whacked, W-H-A-C-K-E-D, whacked. That sounds like Italians now, don't it? The Godfather, make me offer that you can't refuse, whacking. In other words, when you wait on the Lord, you won't get whacked. You won't get whacked, took out. You get it? That's when you wait on the Lord. You may have knocked me down, but that's just the eight mandatory count. I'm getting up. One, two, oh Lord, nobody knows the trouble. Three, four, oh Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me, Jesus. Five, six, it's just a mandatory count. Oh, but before he get to 10, I'm getting up, boy. Oh, I'm getting up. Why, this too shall pass. <laughs> and it came so it could pass. But if you're murmuring and complaining, it'll never pass. It'll be with you forever. You Got to stop your belly aching. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, I remember I had an old preacher tell me someone. He said, 
I said, Red, I tell you, man, things have been got tough, this, that, and the other. I said, why me? He said, why not you? Shoot. He got short of cuss, and he said, shoot. <laughs> Who are you? You ain't no better than nobody else. There it is. Whoop, there it is. He said, who you think you are? You're going to go through just like everybody else. Just because you were preaching don't mean nothing. You got to learn to wait on the Lord, even as a minister, as a pastor. Why? So you don't get whacked. You guys ever seen The Godfather? Vito Corleone. They whacking folk. Luca Brasi, he'll whack you. But when you wait on the Lord, you won't get whacked. <laughs> That's some good stuff there. Yeah, yeah. Or how about this word, wore out? You won't get wore out. I hear folk all the time, ooh, Pastor, I just wore out. You ain't waiting on the Lord right. Ooh, I just, I can, sometimes I can see people from a mile away, uh, uh, figure of speech, figure of speech, right? See them a mile away, you I just go the other way. I, I, yeah, because you didn't see it coming. You see it coming. Ooh, oh Lord, Lord. No, that, that, stop. Sometimes I'll get people, and y'all pray for me. Y'all, Pastor, you bad. You just bad. You bad. I, oh, you look blessed. Glory to God. You look wonderful. Amen. Greater is He. I'll get you before you get started. And they, Hmm? Really? Really? Yeah, really. You blessed coming in and blessed going out. Blessed in the city. Blessed in... Sometimes you got to catch folks before they get started. Why? Because they're not waiting on the Lord. <laughs> That's the bad, ain't it? You, just, you bad. I catch folks. I mean, because, man, shoot, I might be going through something. I don't need your addition. You got to catch folks sometimes because that negativity is contagious. Come on now. And then sometimes, you know, I, I, I am a good person. Listen, now I will listen. Amen. But after we listen, now we got to get to the solution. Well, I ain't ready for that yet. You're not ready for the solution? No. I need to Lick my wounds a while longer. <laughs> Got to be careful. People like licking their wounds. Stop it! Straighten your back up. You, you've, you've, you've had your opportunity to spill the beans. No problem. And I feel you. I feel you. All right. Now. Sometimes I tell folks, I'll give you 30 days. And then after the 30, let's go to work. Let's go. Watch this. Watch this. I feel the letter of the Lord to say this. You're not getting up just for yourself. You're getting up because other people need you, man. There's people y'all can reach. I can't. There's people you can help. I can't. I ain't all of that. There's people y'all can reach that I cannot reach. You got to get up, not just for yourself, but other people need for you to get up and become what God has called you to be. That's right. That's right. Other people need you to get your act together. Yeah. Why? Because they're watching you. Yeah. Trust me, there's always somebody watching. And I, I constantly remind myself of that. You need to get up. Uh, why? Not just because of you, Kevin. There's other people yes, that need your ministry, yes, that need to hear what you have to say. It, see, life ain't just about you. That's your problem. You, all you do all that gone day is think about you and your dad gone problem. It's all about, what am I going to do? When am I, I? It's always I, I, me, me, selfie, selfie, selfie. That's, that's your problem. Too many selfies. You think about other people. 
who can I help? Who can I assist? In the condition I'm in, that's right, you can still help people. Whatever condition you're in, you can still help. So we, we said that word get weary means lose heart, get exhausted, fatigued, drained, whacked, wore out. Oh, here's another one. Deadbeat. Jesus. Have you ever been there where you just feel like you're just a deadbeat? Everybody got their own little vocabulary, you know. You might not use that phrase and that word. You're just a deadbeat. A deadbeat means you just going along to get along. You just my, you, you, nothing's going your way. You just hum dumb. Hum dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just going through the motions. Of, yeah, how's it going? Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You going to church? Yeah, I guess I'll go today. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel like going, but I'll go anyway. Yeah, because Pastor Wright need to see my face that I was at church. Yeah, you're just deadbeat. How's it going today? I mean, it's, it's 90 degrees outside, sunshine. How's it going? Yeah, I guess it's all right outside. You know that. Yeah, yeah. Deadbeat. Just going through the motions. That's what happens when you don't wait on the Lord. But when you wait on the Lord, you will not get weary. You won't become a deadbeat, always whining and complaining and murmuring. Listen here. Oftentimes when I'm talking to young preachers, upcoming preachers, or even older preachers, you talking about deadbeat, Jesus. Whew. I have to guard myself that I don't become like them. Oh, it's just so hard. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, everything. Ain't no money coming in. Ain't no members. Ain't this. Ain't that. I don't know if they even love me anymore. Woo! I mean, they just negative, negative. One time my wife and I was with some folk. Oh, man, with this one couple, they were so daggone negative. I looked at my wife after they left. I was like, glory, they out of here. <laughs> I said, honey, did you feel what I felt? She said, yep, same old, just negative. They're not optimistic. They're pessimists. Just ain't got nothing good to say about nothing about the church. Well, I just want to ask, well, make you, no, he ain't going to say that. Make you short of cussing. Well, why in the belief are you in the ministry? Those people come in there to hear you, they, they leave out worse than what they came in. You're supposed to leave out better than the way you came in. You leave out, tore up, broke down. There should be a difference. Oh, here's, here's another one. Then we're going to just finish on the weary part here. Uh, if you wait on the Lord, you'll run and not get weary. You won't become a deadbeat. Here's another one. I know my wife would love to test this one. Disillusioned. Disillusioned. You tripping. Have y'all ever met folks that's tripping and you don't want to say it to them, but you sitting there like, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> they cuckoo for Cocoa, they tripping. It's like, whoa. What the? You kind of back up a little bit, whoa. They become disillusioned. I've said enough for today. I've said enough for today. Amen. Y'all get something out of that? We're going to let you out in just a few minutes here. But perhaps there might be someone here today that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. If that's you today and you're not 100% sure about your salvation and you kind of feel like you've just been going through the motions. Hey, look at here. All of us have done that at one time or another. It's okay. But today is your opportunity to make it right. So if that's you today, why heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Hey, I want to say a simple prayer with you today. And you can leave out of here born again. You can leave out of here back in fellowship. 
You can leave out of here filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. And what a good church home if that is what you desire. So I would love to pray with you now in the name of Jesus. If that's you today, amen. While heads are bowed and those who are on Facebook Live as well, amen. You know the word of God says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and if thou shalt believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if that's you today, verse 13 goes on to say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if that's you today and you're not 100% sure about your salvation, if that's you today and you're not, well, pastor, I do go to church, I am born again, but I'm not in fellowship. If that's you, amen. We're going to pray with you in just a moment. Then there might be someone here that say, pastor, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. I'd like to have a little bit more information about this Holy Spirit business. Well, we got a class for you as well. We have a minister who will sit down and talk with you about that as well. Amen. Then finally, there might be somebody who say, man, I need a church home. I, hey, I wish I'd have been here 10, 20 years ago. However long y'all been in existence. Lord, I should have been here. I would be living so much further ahead. I would be so much further ahead in life. This invitation is for you as well. Amen. Praise God. So if that's you today, amen. Praise God. I'm, I want to say a prayer, especially with those on Facebook Live, and then we'll minister to the rest of us here in just a moment. So those of you that are listening now, I want you to repeat after me, and I'm going to encourage everybody else to repeat after me as well. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today as humble as I know how, Lord, I just heard in your word, you said, Lord, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, you said, Lord, I'll be born again. So right now, Lord, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is right now my Lord, Savior, and Master. And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead on the third day. I accept you into my life now. Lord, do something wonderful with my life. Hallelujah, glory to God. Perhaps there might be someone here, heads are bowed, eyes are closed, that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If that's you today, here's your opportunity. My heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I want you to raise your hand now. You're saying, Pastor, Hey, man, I need Jesus. Or, Pastor, I'm already born again, but I'm not in fellowship. Pastor, I need to receive the Holy Spirit. Pastor, I need a good church on where I can grow and develop. If that's you today, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand now. Just, just, just slip up your hand. My hands are bowed. I see that hand there. Is there somebody else? Look, just obey God. That's, it's just that plain and simple. Don't allow tradition to get in your head. Woo, Jesus, if I come up in here, my mama will roll over in the grave. Well, let grandma roll, baby. You got to get the word of God where you can grow and develop. Amen. Just obey God. If that's you today, you need Jesus Christ, raise your hand. You trying to get back in fellowship. Lord, I need to get back in fellowship, Pastor. Man, I need a good church home. I need the Holy Spirit. If that's you, raise your hand. Is there someone else? Is there someone else? Come on. This is your last opportunity at this service. This is your last opportunity at this service. Is there someone? Is there someone? All right. If you raise your hand, ma'am, sir, boy, or girl, I would like to invite you right now. Just gather your things for a moment. Come to the front. I'm going to pray with you a short prayer. Then we're going to send you out to a room where they're going to minister to you for two minutes. That's it. So let's give them a hand clap as they come. Please, please come, please. Sing that song for me. If you raise your hand, please come at this time. Amen, praise God, we're so excited for you. Don't be shy, don't be shy, amen, praise God. Come on, let's give her a hand clap as she comes. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Come and you can face me. You can face me. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. 
Amen. Is there someone else? Is, is there someone else? It's not too late. Salvation, rededication. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Looking for a good church home. Come on now. Here's your opportunity. Come on. Don't let this moment pass you by. Is there someone else? Stretch your hands toward her now as we pray. Father, we just thank you for our dear sister. Father, we just thank you from this day forward. Her life will never, ever be the same again. And Father, we say right now that she'll leave out of here saying, I got just what I wanted in my heart. And Lord, we just thank you for breakthrough. Today is the start of something wonderful, new beginnings in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Ma'am, thank you so much. I need you to follow her and she'll take care of you. Let's give her a hand clap as she go. Oh my goodness. Amen, praise God. Well, how many were blessed by the word? Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Now, I would have had you out of here a little bit earlier, but Pastor Leslie took the mic, y'all. I'm picking with, I'm picking, amen. Amen, well, it's opportunity to prosper time. It's time to give. Amen, praise God. I said it's time to give. Amen, glory to God. Glory to God, we just thank you. You know, the Bible says to give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give unto our bosom. Amen. Then the word of God goes on to say that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. Amen. Praise God. Malachi teaches us, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Prove me now herewith. Here with what? Your tithes and offerings. If I will not open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. Then he goes on to say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. How I many of you can stand for God to open up the windows of heaven? How I many of you can stand for God to rebuke the devourer? That's the devil from stealing your finances. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, there are three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one is through PayPal. You can go to newbeginningsplural.clc.org. Again, newbeginningsplural.clc.org. Or you can give by way of Cash App at newbeginningsplural.clc. Or finally, if you don't want to give that way, just simply mail it in to P.O. Box 320-658. Again, P.O. Box 320-658, Lowood, Mississippi, 39232. Well, I trust that you've done all that you're going to do regarding our giving. Let's hold up our offering to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let us agree in faith. Heavenly Father, once again, we do count the honor and the privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, press down, singing together and running over, so men give to our bosom. And Lord, we just thank you that as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world with the glorious gospel. And Father, we just thank you that you told us that our to tithe our benefits, that you'll open up the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive it, and that you would rebuke the devourer for our sake. So Lord, we just thank you right now. We see new beginnings paid off. We see finances coming in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And Father, we just thank you not just for new beginnings, but we thank you for all of our members and supporters that all their debt is canceled. We thank you all their bills are paid. And Father, we thank you that they're blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. So Lord, we just thank you. We disperse our angels. Go forth now. Cause our return to come unto us, for we believe that we receive a hundredfold return in this lifetime, wealth and riches of being our house in Jesus' name. All that agree with this prayer, shout it. Amen, amen, praise God. Well, I tell you, God is good all the time. Amen. Ooh, God is good. How many of y'all enjoy today? I tell you, we had a wonderful day. Amen, praise the Lord. Well, until we all return back uh, to doing the offering like we used to. You know, we saw all just pass the bucket. Uh, but, you know, that day is coming back soon. Glory to God. And, and also, just so you know, in, in January, it is my plans. It is plans. Uh, but you wait till you get a, a flyer 
for a promo piece. Just wait, okay? And those who are listening by Facebook Live, in January, our plans is to go to Wednesday evening Bible study. It won't be no music, all that. We're just going to go right into the Word of God. Amen. Every now and then, I'll throw a little special music up. Amen. But uh, it is my endeavor to just Bible study only. And also, our plans, too. Our plans, it's not definite yet, is to start serving a meal on Wednesday like we used to years ago. Uh, you know, I ain't talking about ham, mac and cheese, and all. I ain't talking about all that, come on guys. But you know, spaghetti, roll, little punch, a little this, little piece of cake, you know. That, because see, some people can go straight from work and come here and you can get a meal. Do you guys like that? I mean, you can come straight here. Hey man, we need to get back to church, y'all. Prayer. We need to get back to what God has called us to do. And that is what is preserving this earth. The church is preserving the earth. Amen. Praise God. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to our deacons. Amen. Praise God. As we receive our offering. 